the part of the month that I always look forward to when I get to talk to Joe Connell from America about what happened in a particular month during the Irish Revolutionary Period 1913 to 1923. You can read Joe Connell every couple of months, every issue of History Ireland. He's uh, doing a very good column on, which is a kind of, well, it's called a countdown to 2016. And it's really uh, a kind of, I suppose, a series of essays which are, I suppose, preparing the ground uh, for the centenary of the 1916 Rising. And it certainly comes highly recommended. But, Joe, thanks a million for joining us again. Good evening to you, Patrick. Hope you're well. I am good, but I am a little surprised by the first name that you're throwing out uh, to us, Peter Delocri, because I'm afraid I've never, I've never heard of him. He was born in, in this month, but uh, who is he and, and why is he significant? Well, he's significant in the sense that he is somebody, as, as you suggest, that people have not heard of. He was a member of the Kilkenny Corporation, and he was chairman of the first Kilkenny Sinn Féin Club. He took part in the 16 Rising and was jailed for the first time right after that. But he was also the first to be taken hostage by the Black and Tans and driven around the streets of Kilkenny, uh, blindfolded with his hands tied up. And he was jailed very many times. He was jailed in Dublin and Mount Joy and Ballykinler and Frongoch and Wandsworth. He was jailed a lot, and he said actually Wandsworth was the worst of them all. Okay, so he's someone who spent quite a lot of time in jail. Did he spend some, didn't he spend some time in Lincoln Jail as well? He did, and maybe that's the one that I should have mentioned first, Patrick. That's one that probably people would have, would have thought about. He was the one, actually, who came up with the plan to spring Emma de Valero, who was also there in Lincoln Jail, of course. And it was Delacroix who cut the key that led to Dev's eventual escape. He actually got the idea from uh, Delacroix, did from his mother, and she was a cousin of the man who had helped the Fenian James Stevens also escape almost the very same way from Richmond Jail. So he was in Lincoln with de Valera at the time. So that, that actually is one of the best stories of the entire revolution period, the story of how the key, was, the mould of the key was made. So how did Delacroix kind of come up with, like he must have been a genius uh, to, to, to work all of this out? Well, the first thing he was, was he was an expert locksmith, and he was the one who came up with the idea, and you're right, it is a great story, and it's one of the things that you kind of look at it and think, this has to be fiction, but it wasn't. Uh, De Valera, of course, served Mass every day. He was the one who took the candles. They got an impression of the key. Uh, they sent it back to Dublin. They got a key from Dublin. Actually, in a Christmas cake, that didn't work. They tried it again and sent another key back to Dublin, and that was returned to them in a birthday cake, and again, it didn't work. But De Lockery said, I'm a locksmith. I can do this. Just send me a blank. And so they did. And when De Valera went to the gate, actually Collins had been there first, tried his key in the lock, it broke. De Valera poked Collins' key out of the lock. And then, in fact, De Valera was able to escape with uh, Sean Milroy and Sean McGarry. Um, De Lockery did not escape there. He had just a few days left on his sentence, so he didn't escape. And, and the final aspect of the story was when they were both TDs later on, Eamon De Valera restored the actual key to De Lockery uh, there right in the Doyle. So he became a TD later. Uh, what about during the revolutionary period? Did he continue uh, in those activities after his release from prison? Oh, he did. As I said, he was, he was uh, captured by the black and tans. He was in and out of prison the whole time. He was one of those people in Kilkenny who every time he got out of jail, he would start back his activities and then he'd go back into jail, it seems. And he was a TD. He was also a, uh, a member of the Shanad in uh, 1925, and he lost that election, was reelected and that sort of thing. So he continued all those sorts of things all the way through. Uh, kind of tragically, he died early. He died at the... Uh, 52 years old in 1931 in Dublin at his sister's house. But he was one of those people that, as you say, we probably haven't heard very much of during the time, but he was very, very active.